The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host with me this week is The Omega. Hello, hello. Yes, and... Party people. Yes, and this is like the, I don't know how many nth show in a row that we try to have two co-hosts on, but something always happens. <laughs> it, it's it's like, it's being cursed. It's like, yeah, you're trying to do this at the end of 2014. Fuck you, we've got a little bit of suckage left for you. Oh, so... I mean, if it's not scheduling hiccups, it's um, one co-host uh, having her laptop take a dive, and uh, and she has Skype on her iPad, just uh, she can't do group calls with it. So yeah, that that makes it a little awkward. <laughs> but but yeah, that explains why uh, there's only one other co-host this week. And considering the amount of content I seem to be pulling out in terms of news stories, I'm actually considering. Uh, you know, and I know this is kind of just out of my ass and out of left field, but I'm considering taking it back up to 90 to, to 90 minutes if mm-hmm. if I can consistently pull out enough material, especially with with uh, a consistent three co-host format. If we finally reach it, then we will have a little bit more time to get everything out that we need to get out and and all of that good stuff. But we'll we'll play with that as the new year comes around. Uh, speaking of the new year, next week is the. Uh, it's the whole uh, 2014 year in review show, which is going to be a longer show because we're going to have a bunch of people on there talk about 2014, the ups, the downs, mostly downs, I'm sure, because 2014, all in all, you know, well, you know. But despite the positive stuff that has happened, I mean, you know, you know, positive stuff has happened to well, both Omega and me personally, for sure. You know, the, yeah, there has been a, yes. But there has been a lot of negative in the in 2014. We're going to talk about it next week, and we're also going to have you know we're going to have other guests on you know people from the site. I think uh, Magic Steve said he was going to hop on, um, oh, cool. you know among a few others. I don't have the email list in front of me, um, so it'll it'll be interesting to just have another talk like that. I might make it even a live recording. So if you so if I do just pay attention to my Tumblr. It's at, it's over at Gomer Two Double X. Or the Thespian Talk Tumblr, or the Archie Gomer Prod Tumblr, whichever one, and more details will come out about that if we decide to do live streaming or what have you. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, and the day this goes up, you all have already will have seen my uh, newest review of Royal of Royal Kill, which stars uh, Gail Kim, who was former WWE diva, and, and like I think it was like her first movie role or whatever. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, and oh my god. Okay, they had a budget of $300,000. How good of a movie do you think they could make on a $300,000 budget? Well, that depends, because I've seen some low-budget movies that are pretty good, and I've seen some high-budget movies that are pretty shitty. Yeah. Okay, do you think for $300,000 they could actually hire a decent editor? Probably, yes? No? Yeah. Maybe? Do Do you think they could hire a decent sound guy? Oh, well, I don't know. Is sound more expensive than editing? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, three hundred thousand. I know it's it's not a lot in terms of making movies, but for something of this caliber, it's just. It, I, I go a lot more into it in the uh, review. I don't go like full in depth analyzing every little thing. Like, what does this mean? The movie itself, holy shit! The editing, oh my god! Oh. It, it, it's uh, <laughs> the voiceovers and the sound mixing. It is just oh. Uh, made me wish I had real Lambic to drink during that video. <laughs> I do keep bottles around for prop purposes, though. So, yay! Prop Lambic. Yes, Prop Lambic. Had it, I've had Prop Lambic since 2010, so <laughs> I try to keep at least one bottle for prop purposes. That yeah, makes um, sense. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, how has is, how is your week been, Omega? I mean, you know. Oh, how- my week has been exhaustive because, um, so the semester is done. So, which means I'm allowed to work as many hours as I want to, well, as many hours as I'm scheduled for. So, yeah, I'm kind of exhausted. Yeah, earning all the monies, making all the monies, doing the things you love. Pretty much. Sweet. Ah, so, so, oh God, oh God, let me think, think, think. Other things that have happened in this this past week, past couple of weeks. Um, I have my notes here. <laughs> um, so, have you heard of? 
Megan Fox, and I don't mean the Transformers actress. Um, no, because that's who I immediately thought of. I know, that's who a lot of people immediately think of, but no. Megan Fox is this, uh, as, as Raw Story describes her, as a science-hating homeschooling mother. Oh, this woman, the one that made the uh, the video in the in the museum. Yes. Okay, yes. I, I, I saw it on Joe, my God. Yeah. Indeed I did. She not only did that, she ha- she has a sequel. She has a sequel series where she goes to... Uh, uh, of, uh, of course she does. Of, of course she does. Yeah, she goes to a zoo in the suburb of Chicago. I forget the actual name of it. Brookfield Zoo, that's the one. Um, and, and Holly is like, oh, God, no. Because <laughs> I think she lived near there at one point. Oh, really? Yeah. And, um, and so, of course, Becky and I... This is this is how our date nights go sometimes. We will find some of the most batshit crazy fundamentalist Christian stuff, and we will riff on it and rant at it. <laughs> and this was no exception. She went to the Brookfield Zoo in search of dragons. Well, I mean, some zoos do have Komodo dragons. Not Komodo dragons. Dragons. Like fire-breathing dragons? Yeah... But, yeah, something like that. Like, I wasn't aware we had breeding programs for that. I wasn't either. But they went through, and they, and they kept claiming that... Did she zoo... find any? No. Because that would... <laughs> I would... I'd go to that zoo. Hey, I where do you want to go? Let's go to the Dragon Zoo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, road trip. Let's go to fucking Chicago, man. <laughs> Let's go to the Dragon Zoo. There you go. But, um... Oh, but, yeah. Like, a lot of the things they tried to to impress upon the viewer was that the zoo was anti-human it was like people are bad this is how what? you could be a... they, they tried to make it seem how? like that the, the zoo mean... was they made it she tried to make it seem like that the zoo was pushing you know their their eco-friendly you know agenda for lack of a better term right now but and and their ideas they as are a, yeah as but a th- as that's the point of a zoo well no they're trying like to... it's like you had one job and that's the job of a zoo i mean well, yeah well it's... no no well, no, what they were getting at was um, they were trying to push the eco-friendly stuff as a religion. But it, but it's not a religion. <laughs> it's just how you, like, conserve an animals and you breed them and make them not extinct anymore. Yeah. I Noah mean, did it. It's in the Bible. Noah did it. Uh-huh. So there. Yeah. Just saying. You know, two of every animal on an explicably large ark. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, so how Noah our... practiced conservation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just uh, there was like it was almost like a free tour of the zoo with little bits, you know, with little bits of bat shit in it. Little bits of craziness for you and yours. Yes, and by the way, this is the same woman who's being sued for defamation by an employee of the Orland Park Library because among because the one big thing that we took that we got from it was um, she went to the adult library section i may have talked about it on last week's that's being talk or something but she went to the adult uh, section of the library and used their computer lab up there and some guy was looking at like a picture of a naked woman whether or not yeah, it was porn right yeah whether or not it was actually porn we don't know but to her you know oh, it's, oh my I, god naked I, I, I i'm going to i'm going to actually err on her side usually when when people are looking at naked pictures of the library it is porn yeah, <laughs> because usually. Usually, because but, some, sometimes, sometimes if I wanted, you know, a bit of rest and relaxation or change of scenery when I worked from home, I would go and I would take my laptop to the Chester County Library mm-hmm. and I'd sit in their very nice little Wi-Fi area and have me like, you know, some nice quiet library time. And they were always kicking people out, and, you know, children and adults were looking at porn on <laughs> computers, like always. It's like, OK, I, I love porn as much as a lot of other people out there do. But there's a time and a place for it. This is true, but the thing is that, like, let the library employee handle that if someone's looking at porn. It's not your responsibility. Yeah. You don't have to get involved. Just tell the librarian. They'll take care of that. And it's just, oh, that woman is bug nuts. Like I said, I don't remember if I brought her up last week. I may have, but she's just so insane she had to be brought up twice. And I don't think Omega has well, – well, I know you – like you said, you had heard the uh, the, the – the museum audit, but I don't think you'd heard yeah. anything else yet. So, so no. now you know. I, I still, I still, I want to. I think you should call this episode of the show the Dragon Zoo. The Dragon Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, so, so at any rate, we've reached our uh, shout-out section. Uh, do you have any shout-outs for this week? Uh, 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 come back to me. 
I <laughs> come back to you. I have um, to think. Uh, you have to think. You have to think of a shout out. Well, my shout out for this week, actually, I am about to kind of pretty much just pull it out of my ass because I came unprepared. Because among other things I've been doing, I've been working on getting a new curtain put up in my room. Holy shit, it's a pain in the ass. Ugh. Any kind of house thing never goes the way that you think it will. Ever. Yeah. And then yeah. you die. Amen. Yeah, pretty much. But I'm actually going to give it a, give a shout out, out to the gaming metalhead. Um who is who is all on my site, artygomer.com. And right now she's doing a Let's Play series on Serena, which is a game that features the voice talents of one pushing up roses. Oh, right. <laughs> I remember her tweeting about that. Yes, it's free. I've got it. I haven't played through it because I just didn't have the patience for it at the time. Sins. Yeah, but I, I, have, I can play through when I have a little bit more patience. But she's playing through it. Uh, right now I'm looking at uh, part two of hers that's just went up. Again, it's on rtgomer.com. Go check her out. Uh, the Gaming Metalhead, I think it's under Izzy's Let's Plays if you need to go through like the directory and drop downs or whatever. I've been work. I've been trying to work on getting everything kind of set up better on the site to where it's easier to navigate, but oh god. <laughs> HTML is sad. HTML is sad. SCSS is sad. Oh, I'm trying to learn a little bit of extra for both. Oh god. I have a, I have a WYSIWYG editor. But now that was like that was like years ago. Mm -hmm. So now I have to upgrade to the new one, and it's hard. And quite honestly, I'm thinking of just saving up some some money and getting someone to do it. Yeah, that's I've actually... I, I I can't. It's just hard, and I'm stupid, and I need things to work on iTunes, and I just want a web person to do it for me. But I mean, I'll pay them obviously. But well, yeah, I'm just stupid. Yeah, I've actually had somebody offer to help redesign the site for free. I don't know if that offer is still on the table, but <laughs> but and I'm sure she's listening. Well, I, if the offer, I know on the that table. all all I'd have to do is tweet out and say, "Hey," and I think I even know someone that does web design too, mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, will you help me? I'll pay for it," and people would do it. But I wouldn't be comfortable if someone's like, "I'll do it for you for free." I'd be like, "No, you should be paid for your work." Yeah, that's how that's how we do things in this day and age. Yeah, everybody's got to get paid for something, which is understandable. It's very understandable. I mean, I mean, a lot of the artwork, like the artwork you see from my personal stuff, all of my podcasts, my videos, and everything that Becky has done, she has done for free. And I, and even though she keeps assuring me, it's fine, it's fine, your boyfriend, you're fine, okay, you know, you know, I, I still feel like, uh, I feel like I'm taking advantage of her, <laughs> even though she keeps assuring me, no, no, but. But of course, and all, and as always, her paid stuff comes first. I know she's got a commission she's working on, so, so it's like if you know my free stuff has to take the backseat, that's fine. So. Oh, I thought of a, I thought of a shout out actually. Oh yeah. Yes, you should all go and you should all watch Happy Viking. He has a show. He's a new uh, a new producer on that guy with the glasses or channelawesome dot com or whatever it is now, but I get confused. But um, the reason that you should watch it is um, I don't like metal. But my wife loves metal. Yeah. But I like I like Vikings reviews because he makes metal make more sense than just someone like hemorrhaging their throat into the microphone. <laughs> hemorrhaging their throat. <laughs> That's what it makes me think of. <laughs> the only kind of metal I like I like Nightwish and I like um uh, this one band and I can't even remember what they're called but they sing about Vikings and dragons and finding the magic sword and stuff like that. Oh, I think I, I think I know the band you're talking about. The name is escaping. I just don't I. I just don't like metal where they're just like... Yeah. And I'm like, excuse me, what? Could you repeat that, please? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hoggins listening to this and shouting the name of the band at us. And it's like, she yeah. probably... Well, she loves every metal band ever. She's like, have you ever heard the one band whose lead singer is like a Rottweiler? And I'm like, what? what? Uh, oh, and Hate Beat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy Viking was on the uh, uh, Nash's yeah, Megastream on... yesterday. He talked about Hate Beak. I'm yes. like, fuck yeah, Hate Beak. <laughs> I've heard of that, and again, because because my wife has told me, yeah, there's a there's a band where a parrot is that's stupid. Yeah, it's like, I mean, more power to the parrot, but that's silly. That's it's silly, silly. but it sounds kind of awesome. I I don't like metal. Yeah, well, Just it's fun for a novelty, that's for sure. And All I right. and I remember where I heard about it. I heard about it from two, <laughs> because obviously, hate beak. It's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. That makes perfect sense, actually. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Mm. Uh, so let us let us hit the news. We've got one holdover from last week. 
Oh and... my goodness gracious, it's time for the news. Yes, definitely. So we can't we can't impinge on other people's copyrights, but we can have a knockoff. De- definitely. Definitely so. But uh, this top one, like I said, is a holdover from last week. I really want to put this out there because it's fucking awesome. Members of the biker group Hell's Angels took to one Walmart store in Fresno, California on Black Friday to buy out the entire stock of bicycles for a charity drive for needy children. The members were then going to donate the bikes to Povereo House, a Fresno area nonprofit dedicated to helping the homeless and needy, the Blaze reported. Walmart couldn't have been happier. Well, of course, they're getting money. The Blaze showed photos of the store manager on hand as the Hells Angels assembled the bikes outside the store, helping to load the stacks of boxes and bicycles. Very happy to work with the Hells Angels and their organization donating bikes to the Poviero House, the store manager said. Uh, Reddit post said the Hells Angels actually camped outside the Walmart for days to take advantage of the Black Friday bike deals. One member told the Fresno Bee that the purchase was actually part of the Hells Angels 16th yearly toy charity to drive. So not only did they get all of these bicycles, they fucking camped out for this shit. See, that's kind of cool because now I imagine all the people who wanted to camp out and be obnoxious in front of the Walmart Mm -hmm. were scared away by the bikers. Oh, yeah. Because it seems to me that the Hells Angels are never in the news except for, like, feel-good stories anymore. They're always like, you won't believe what the Hells Angels did. Oh, better click on this and see. Oh, they they protected a child who's been abused and and they, they went with him to court so he wouldn't feel afraid. Yeah. Hardcore, yeah. and I'm like, well, so I guess that like, we don't have any violent bikers anymore. They're all just like, you know, we're like Hell's Angels, help Anonymous fight the Westboro Baptist Church or something like that, you know. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Good for them. Good job, bikers. Very much so, and and that's one of those few instances where I I can accept somebody like camping out in front of a Walmart before Black Friday or what have you, you know, for that kind of thing because they're doing it for charity. They're not doing it just to be selfish pricks. They're they're going in there, they're getting the stuff, and they're giving it to kids who need them. That yeah. that I can get behind. I, I I honestly can. It's like the reminds me of this is a real thing you can Google it. There are Disney gangs. Like there are like adults that like are in gangs at Disney, and they like they all have different ones. Like like there'll be something like like Mickey's Marauders or something like that. They all have like denim jackets and like custom patches and everything, and they go to Disney World all the time. And it's like a, this is a real. And they have like charity drives and everything. This is a real thing. Disney Google it. Games. It exists. I'm so serious here. <laughs> that is awesome. I know, right? <laughs> oh god, which which one is the one for Stitch? I would join that one. I want to join that one because Stitch is awesome. <laughs> oh, Hannah means family. And family means nobody gets left behind. <gasps> I didn't know you had that talent. You did not know this? Well, okay. No. I don't, okay, I don't pull it out very often, so. I love. You have to understand, a friend of mine, like, drug me to see that movie. He's like, you'll love it. And I was like, whatever. And I was like, I do. I do love it. It is my family. Yeah. It, was it one... is little. I made it myself. It is little and broken. Definitely. I love it. Uh, but speaking of families and, and people who tr- supposedly speak for families. <clears throat> oh, boy. One Million Moms, an arm of the American <laughs> Family <laughs> Association, is targeting its latest boycott to push at the ABC show How to Get Away with Murder. In an email alert, the group asks its members to call Coles and ask the department chain to stop advertising on the, quote, creepy, <laughs> wicked show that is not at- Coles. <laughs> yeah, I know. Coles is still around? Oh, nah. Actually, sure actually, I, right. TMI, Coles is the only place that has the kind of bra that I like, I'm just saying. Does Although I was able to find a website selling it, so I have them coming to me, but just saying. Yay! Yeah. But still, it's like, it's like we're going to show Coles what for. <laughs> yeah. Um, even if you were exactly one million mothers, um... It's not. It's more like four or five thousand mothers, actually. Yeah, that that's not a million. You guys can't count. It's it's like Fox News saying that millions of people showed up to protest uh, gay marriage outside the White House when there's only like a thousand. Of, of course they did. Of course. Yes, and there is screen crap. There, there there's proof. There are screen caps of it and everything. Oh, but it says that the show advertises a whole slew of sins. You don't watch daytime TV, do you? Oh. A slew, a veritable plethora of sins. Oh, yes. All the sins you can handle. And you know what? It's time (laughs) for a One Million Moms dramatic reading. Go for it, go for it. ABC's creepy program, How to Get Away with Murder, did not end with the finale since it is now airing the season all over again. 
New episodes will begin on January 29th, and in the meantime, the network plans to air reruns, unless 1MM can intervene. The Why show... are you British? I don't know. <laughs> the show is about more than murder and violence. There is a whole slew of sins in this series that the network calls entertainment. The program has included assault and murder on several occasions, as well as graphic heterosexual sex and homosexual. The show is called sex. "Getting Away with Murder." We, you can't just like have it like happen off stage and like someone remember that murder that we committed. Yeah, I hope we can get away with that. I tell you what. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but there is more. There is more. There's graphic heterosexual and homosexual sex scenes on a graphic level foul language mockery of jesus christ and christians sex with a minor statutory rip, adultery and marital affairs by the way all those words that sounded incomplete they were they used dashes a dash is yeah, used he, to he ensure. wasn't just although it does sound like you're some kind of like evil little snake like they were having sex with your like your little tongue switching out yeah pornographic level sex scenes though really so they're showing penetration really I mean, you are, are, are we, because, because, hi, porn connoisseur here, um, pornographic level sex scenes would show penetration, um, they would show a whole lot, they would show, you know, they would, they would show things like the woman actually, you know, going down on a guy, and vice versa, you know. Yeah, but for these people, like, a guy and a girl sitting next to each other on a public bus is pornographic, for Christ's sake, I mean, you know. Oh my god, I've been in porn with so many women now. <gasps> <I knew> <laughs> Do it. Oh my Gomer God. the Ranting Thespian banned in England. There you go. Uh, which, which, oh, that does remind me. There's a follow-up to one story from last week. You heard about, uh, like, like the new rules that they put out for, uh, uh, like, like the ban on certain types of pornography. Yeah, it's where it's it's not even on foreign porn. It's just British produced porn. So uh, there was like a sit on your face sit in at Parliament. Uh, Yes, because it was in the it was in the Guardian and everything. And and here's the thing is, I my my bookshop sells a lot of it. There's a fuck ton of newspapers in Northern Ireland. And it was on the front page of some of these newspapers. <laughs> nice. So hilarious. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's like I said last week. When you sit on somebody's face, you're not literally sitting on their face. You're just straddling over it, and it looks like you're sitting. That's not really sitting on your face, and they call that a dangerous act. Is it? Like, I, because it's a smothering risk. Is it like keep this bag out of reach of children? Keep face sitting out of children? I don't even know where that's going. I don't know. Oh, oh, but there, there is more. This series pushes casual sex as acceptable, even with multiple partners or encounters in public places. This wicked show has many dark images, including a rotting corpse, dead bodies, and other gore. Even though the program airs on Thursday evenings at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, it is not late enough for the violent, twisted plot and sensual scenes that are completely soft pern. Occasionally. <laughs> oh no, pern. pern. It sounds like, you know, when you have to, like, <laughs> back in the day when, like, you know, like, uh, oh shoot, what was that, that torrenting thing? The Napster. Back in the day with Napster. And, like, you would have to misspell things because that's how people would hide things. Yeah. I think I'll go search for some pern. Pern. Ermigard pern. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ermigard pern. Occasionally, like on this past Thanksgiving day, it airs early at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, and then again at its regular time slot. Okay. One million moms. We, 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 we went through all this. And, and I want to say this again. We're going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it, at least, until you get it through your thick skulls. If you don't want your kids watching something, turn off the damn TV. It's that simple. Well, the thing is that, you know, they're like, oh, they're portraying this as, as correct and things and stuff. But it's I have not watched the show, but it's called Getting Away with Murder or How to Get Away with Murder. And I assume crimes are involved. So I don't think anyone's looking to this as like a bastion of how to live your life. Yeah, because you know? you're not going to see a kid watch this and be like, oh, cool. So it's okay to go out and, and beat a prostitute to death, slash her throat, and dismember her, and then toss all her, bodies in the all her body parts in the Hudson River? Okay. No. That's not going to happen. Yeah, and it's the same thing. Like The same thing happens on Law and Order, except you don't like actually most times see it happen. Yeah. You know? Although the one point that they do have is it isn't appropriate to have sex in public, you know, because you actually can get fined for that. But yeah. again, who's going to what 
small child is going to be like, oh, I better go out and have sex in public, I tell you what. Yeah, as, as somebody who actually has been busted for having sex in public, I can say, yeah, not a good idea. What? You did? Where? It's at a ballpark. Not in front of people or anything. Why? We had nowhere else there to go. There could be time. germs everywhere. It's like the people who have sex on the beach, oh, you will have sand up yonder, and that ain't not a good place to have it. You'll get an infection. <laughs> That's it could be like, It could be like, I don't even know, like shrimp eggs. I, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, don't, I think about these kinds of things. I don't want to get some kind of like weird parasite. And they'll be like, how did this happen? While we're having sex. Where are you having sex? Oh, in the worst place. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that That's why they have different positions for... Different. You could have got E. coli all up your dick. Well, just think about that. Well, yeah, I could have, but I didn't. Young young man, <laughs> just think about that. Mm. Although, e. coli. Although, technically, we were busted in, you know, while well, we were in the backseat of my car, so it was marginally. Oh. All right. Uh, well, you didn't say that part. Well. Uh, but you were, like, in the restroom or something. Actually, we were. Th we did that, too. Oh, God. <laughs> well, if, it's your, if, it's your own, if it's your own car, then if you get something, it's your own fault, because you should keep your car cleaner, but that's not to say about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, and the next day, considering my dad and I share names, oh boy, that got all over. That got all over the police dispatch. We're in a small town. Do the math. Um, <laughs> you, did you get in trouble? Well, no. My dad got bitched at a little bit, and he had to be like, "No, that wasn't me." <laughs> uh, but yeah, speaking of Florida, uh, as we so often are. Yes, manatee, take a shot. Manatee, Florida. Yes, a Bradenton woman was arrested Sunday afternoon after getting into a fight with her twin sister about a vibrator and her boyfriend, according to the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. What? <laughs> vibrator and her boyfriend. Hopefully they're not one and the same. Uh, Heidi Creamer started fighting with her twin at 1.38 p.m. at their home address there. I love how they, like, state, like, the exact moment. Like, the was like, all right, we're starting time it. Yeah. Uh, over Heidi's boyfriend and a sexual toy, vibrator, and the verbal argument soon turned to blows, according to a probable cause affidavit. Kramer punched her sister in the face in the foyer of the apartment, knocking her to the floor, the report said. <laughs> That's so classy. I punched her in the foyer. Yeah. <laughs> I was not in the vestibule. I was in the foyer because we're classy. The victim then started kicking Kramer away as Kramer punched, scratched, and pulled her twin's hair. Kramer stopped after a few minutes and began grabbing her personal belongings, stacking them outside the front door, and stating that she wanted to leave, according to the affidavit. When Kramer exited the front door to, the pl to place some items outside, her twin slammed the door and locked Kramer outside. I understand. <laughs> That's kind of slick. Yeah. When a deputy arrived on scene, the twin sister was on the balcony of her apartment with blood on her face, where she had been yelling to neighbors to call the police. Kramer was banging on the front door, screaming obscenities, and yelling at the officer, according to the report. Oh, excuse me. The deputy handcuffed Kramer, citing safety concerns about Kramer's aggressive behavior, and placed her in the back of a patrol vehicle, the de deputy said. When the deputy read Kramer her Miranda rights, Kramer began screaming that she was fighting with her sister over a vibrator and her boyfriend. Kramer refu then refused to speak to the officer. Kramer is being charged with domestic battery and was taken to Manatee County Jail, and she was released on bond. What the hell? I mean... Okay, those are two things you need to get your own because you don't want to share with anybody. Both the boyfriend and the vibrator. Just yeah, saying. just no, no. I mean, I mean, okay, okay. It's one thing if you want to share a boyfriend, but uh, sharing your boyfriend with your sister is just—I don't think that's a good idea. That's not a healthy relationship. No. I, I also, mean, don't share your vibrator because germs. Yeah, just no, no, don't do that. I mean, I, I, okay, I, I yeah, no, just no. Just because she's your sister, that doesn't mean that she can't give you herpes. Exactly. The more you know. Yes. <laughs> I have become seriously like the lowbrow version of Tara. <laughs> have you noticed? That? I have. I am your Tara. I am your Tara. So there you go. Yay! I have a Tara. I have a Tara of your own. Yes. Oh. Rio Rancho, New Mexico. When a Cleveland high school student wrote about Jesus and drugs for an assignment, that caused some controversy in Rio Rancho. Now a teacher at the school is off the job. I love teaching, said creative what? writing teacher Katrina Guraschio. I'm not here to judge them. I'm here to encourage them. Guraschio said her creative writing class is a safe place for students to find their voices. The assignment was to take a fairy tale or legend and rewrite it in modern times. One student changed the biblical story about Jesus handing out bread and fish to the poor to Jesus handing out marijuana to the sick. I like He this. would. He totally would, too. Totally. You know that he would. I don't take any personal offense. It's not written for me. It's written for them. 
It's how they can express themselves, said Garasquillo. But according to the teacher, during peer review, one of the other students got highly offended by the story and told her parents. And then the teacher was put on administrative leave while the district investigated. Garasquillo said she felt targeted, harassed, and forced to resign. She has one last message for her students. If they have something to say, say it, she said. Not everyone's going to agree with you, but that doesn't make your point val invalid or worthless. Tell your story. The teacher was not forced to resign because of the students' freedom of speech rights, according to a spokeswoman for Rio Rancho Schools. The spokeswoman said the teacher chose to resign. I can totally see that happening. Yeah, like, she, yeah, she totally was, was not forced to resign. No, not at all. Yeah. No, it's just the parents kept calling for her head and, and the Yell. Well, the thing is, she's not even the person that wrote it. I mean, what was she supposed to do? Like, yell at that kid? I mean, no. no and, and and I think I think I can see where the kid is getting. A and here's the thing: because if oh my god, she, if they're... she if she had yelled at that child, then what she would be she would be compromising his First Amendment rights. Yeah. So it's like for her, it's you know, when, well, you know what? She did the right thing. And the kid got offended, told their parents about it. I, I don't even know how, how much this kid was really offended. This kid may have come home and said, Yeah, Timmy wrote a story about Jesus. If he was in modern times, he'd be giving marijuana to the sick people. And, and he totally would, too. Yeah, totally. Cause, he'd be giving, he'd be, I'm not even the sick people, he'd be giving everybody. Yeah, shit, man. I mean... Take this. Is it is it your body? No, but it's really great stuff, man. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Christ. Hey, no yeah. problem. Yeah, I mean, and it's like... I, I Come over to my place. It. We've got some really great wine, and he's like, "Here, like a six pack of bottled water." <laughs> there you go. Chris yeah. will hook you up, man. Definitely, definitely will. You know, Jesus, best pot dealer in the universe. There you go. Would be. <laughs> Good. Oh, and and speaking of Christianity in schools, which 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 <laughs> I've been which on we so never we which in the in the United States we never should be doing, but somehow we always are. Yes. I mean, and I've been on record before and I've stated, you know, hey, you know, if you have your own personal religion, you want to pray to yourself in school, you want to go into like, like, like pray at your desk or pray while you're walking to the next class, that's fine. I'm not going to give you shit for it. If you want to pray over your meal at the lunch table, that's fine, you know, because that's not a school sanctioned thing. That's your own personal thing. That's fine. But when the school is sponsoring some kind of a religious thing, that's when we have issues. That's, that's illegal. Yeah, because it's illegal. You know that, and that's like, the only reason. When I when I was in elementary school, I, I actually had a pretty good friend, who um she was Muslim, mm -hmm. like her mom was from the area and had gone and was studying in Saudi Arabia. You're like years and years and years ago. Mm -hmm. Met her dad, and they fell in love, and he decided to come back to the United States with her, so she converted. So they had four daughters, and all of them were Muslim, and so she was actually given like a place that she could go. Like uh, I think it was it was a well, the counselor's room like it wasn't the counselor's room but it was the room outs like part it was this little closet like area where they had like individual therapy for like the special kids like it was that little area that she could go and use like a prayer mat and stuff like that so she wouldn't be the target of any kind of bullying right which and like that was totally cool like religion was like never a thing when I was a kid in school like it never came up like we did. We learned about Christmas and Hanukkah and like Easter, and we didn't learn about Kwanzaa because it was that long ago. But you yeah. know, it was just never a thing. Yeah, it was. I think it was kind of the same way with me too. Just, eh. I was like, all right, here's this, here's this, here's that, you know, whatever. But some people are different religions. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, hell, I remember a Jewish let's, kid let's, in my third let's grade go, class. Let's go play jacks, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because yes, kids, that's how long ago it was. When I was in elementary school. I played jacks. <laughs> And uh, marbles. Ah, uh, yes. But uh, this one is out of Georgia. And and this is the reason why I brought Georgia. up... Georgia? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm this... going to do that every time. Every time? Every time. Every week that, that happens. Alrighty. So, so we're going to go over to Georgia. And this is the reason why I brought up the whole religion in school thing. A Georgia mom was upset when her fifth grade son came home from his public elementary school with a Bible, and she's disappointed with the school and community's response. Jessica Green considers herself a Christian, but doesn't think Cloverleaf Elementary in Cartersville should allow Gideon's International to hand out Bibles to students, reported the local news station. Green... The Gideon's are creepy because they're old men in suits hanging around on street corners. Just saying. Hmm. Biblical Just prophecies. saying. Maybe. S hmm. They probably wouldn't even know what to do with a penis. Like, <laughs> and they all have them, too. 
You're it, like, I don't know. It's just sitting there. I mean, I don't know what it's it for. It sits there. It, it squirts liquid sometimes, but that's about it. Makes me feel a lot better once I do, though. <laughs> and you could take it either way, folks. <laughs> Uh, Green's son, Leo Butler, said his teacher told the class that the evangelical group had volunteered to distribute Bibles, and the students formed a line in the library. Students were not required to take a Bible, the boy said, but children who did not wish to receive one were told to walk ahead of the line and stand on the other side of the room. I was just shocked the school system would do that, Green said. I tried to contact the superintendent, but he has not returned my calls. Because, yeah, allowing the Gideons to come on and do this, that's... Not, no, that that's kind of violating some... Yeah, as, if they're on school property, that's a, that's quote unquote a school sanctioned event. Yeah, you're allowing them to do it. You know, like I said, it's one thing to do it. You know, to have a personal thing, you know, an individual thing to have a group come on, and and be sanctioned, be essentially sanctioned by the school. Keep in mind, public school. If it was a private well, school, yeah, probably would not. When be I was conversation. when I was at Temple University, they had to stand. On, they, they could stand on like the corner of Broad Street, you know, they just couldn't go on campus because then they would be, you know, they could be being seen as being sanctioned by the university. Mm -hmm. And also, I remember being told that if the university asked them to leave, that they had to. Yeah. Or they, they could just call the Philly police, you know. Yeah. But that's just, like I said, creepy old guys in suits that just, they're like, hey, have you heard the good news? Mm -hmm. uh, no, what happened? Here is a Bible. The only good part about the Gideon Bible, though, is the beginning has the Lord's Prayer in every fucking language in the world, even those like really, really awesome like symbol languages from the South Pacific. <laughs> nice. So that's really the only good that you can get out of the Gideon Bible. Sweet. Oh, so uh, Green received a Facebook message from the school, which explained the Bible <laughs> distribution event. That's so unprofessional. Oh, uh, dear. So we'll just send her a Facebook message on Facebook. Yeah, because why not? The Gideons are permitted to offer Bibles to students who wish to pick them up, she, the message said. It is strictly voluntary, and the library was the location where the students could pick one up. Our librarian did not give them out. We appreciate your input. If you have further concerns, please contact administration during school hours. Thank you. Um, still violating okay. that whole church and state separation thing because, yeah, because you are literally sanctioning them by allowing them to do that on campus. Mm -hmm. That's what you're not getting. Aye. And she posted her concerns on the school's Facebook page, but was pilloried, pilloried? That's a new Ooh, word on me. Word. Mm -hmm. word. By other parents before Cloverleaf disabled public posts. Some of the comments I got before it was taken down from the page were, you're outnumbered here, Green said. Other parents posted a standby Cloverleaf on the school's page. Secular groups have challenged Bible distribution by Gideons at schools across the country, citing Supreme Court rulings that prohibit religious instruction in public education. Green said her concern was for children, saying students who didn't want to participate would feel singled out among their classmates, which that's another aspect that's of it. Yeah, because, you know, you don't want to get one. OK, you go stand over there. All right. You know, and, and I probably would have been one of them because even back in school, we have so many Bibles here. Holy shit. I don't need another one. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, the, the, the public. This, this country is I don't even know. Yeah, it's and, fucked up, man. Yeah, and you got out too. I did. I yeah, you get managed out. to get out. We we all need to get out. It's like it's like I want to take like I want to like pack up Becky and then all of our belongings. We just go to like to I want to say Canada, but maybe we'll just go across the pond. I don't know. Go go to the Netherlands. That's a great place to be. They're yeah. all very super liberal out there. Sweet, sweet. Let's go to the Netherlands. <laughs> nah. Uh, but speaking of Canada, oh dear. Mm. Really, Canada is so not often in trouble. Yeah, but this one, a uh, man in Quebec's eastern town. I knew it. I knew it. It was from Quebec. That's, they're the troublemakers. Yeah. It, wait, wait, isn't there some other quote unquote company from Quebec that, mm. that, was, that, that was giving. <gasps> oh. I need to tell you this. I might as well tell you on air. Okay, so the uh, CEO of PME mm -hmm. has, looks very distinctive. There is a man in my city who looks almost exactly like him, except he's Irish and he's like the sweetest customer ever. Oh wow! So, so he like it's... always, it's so it's such cognitive dissonance because I like wince, and he's like, "And how are you doing this morning, then, dear?" I'm like that's great. He's like, "Oh, just the telegraph today, then. All right, you have a fine day." So it is. And I'm like, "Uh, uh, uh, so weird." Alter the universe. Out. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> okay, or, but or, or maybe he's supposed to be in our universe, and 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 the CEO of PME is is the alternate universe that somehow escaped into ours. Oh god. Yeah. I, I I am accepting that as canon. Boom, there we go. 
Evil <laughs> will be destroyed by fire. Yes, please. Uh, but anyways, a man at Quebec's eastern townships has had to break down his backyard ice rink after a neighbor made a complaint about it to the city of Sherbrooke. Jean Christopher Bossy, Boss, Bossy, has been building a neighborhood rink in his Bus. backyard. Bus, okay. Bus, it, that's Bus. French. Ah, he's been building a neighborhood rink in his backyard for the past five years. Every year, he toils for hours, outfitting the 12 by 8 meter rink with boards and lights. But there will be no hockey this winter. The city said the structure contravenes area zoning bylaws and told Boss that he has... Uh, is it Boss or Boss? Boss. I think it's Boss. 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 If boss. French. You boss. French it up there. Boss, Boss, Boss. Uh, told him he had to take it down or risk receiving a hefty fine. The complaint doesn't hold water. It was a family rink, he said. All of this kind of decision from the city does encourage other people to make complaints. Uh, Jean-Christophe Boss says he's been building his backyard hockey rink for five years. I think that was just a reiteration from a picture caption, I guess. Boss said the bylaw in question doesn't outlaw residential rinks, just rinks destined for mixed commercial and residential uses. Even so, he complied. Neighbor Nor Normand Green Greenier is relieved. He said he doesn't like looking at a big white wall and netting for half a year. Well, then, what the fuck are you doing in this Canada? This sounds like one of those things that the authorities just turned a blind eye to and said everybody's having fun until some asshole needed to feel big by bitching about it. And then the city was like, well, I guess we have to say something. Yeah, and even then, the, even then, the bylaw supposedly does not out, outlaw residential rinks, which, from the sounds of it, that's what this is. It's... Well, see, this guy did not get the last laugh because, he, okay, we're a podcast, a little, you know, podcast, and you're in Florida, and I'm in the UK, and we're talking about one guy mm -hmm. from Quebec. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Mr. Asshole Neighbor has got his name known now because of the internet. Oh, yeah, definitely. For shame, shame upon him. Yeah, which, by the Syphilis way, is also... in his soul. Which, by the way, is also where I find my news stories on the internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're just pushing it a little bit further. Uh, and he says that I found that in my kitchen or in my dining room. It created a significant visual impact. My land is 12 feet lower than his. It caused me visual harm. What There's the no such thing as visual. It's the biggest, you lying liar. Visual harm. Why are you okay. telling lies, liar? The only way it could cause visual harm is if it was as bright as the sun. Yeah, seriously. Like, you'd have to have some, like, retina damage or something. Yeah, it's just, no. And, of course, he's, he's also said the sound of pucks constantly banging off the boards was too loud, and that the presence of the rink would reduce the value of his home if he decided to sell it one day. Really? Bitch, bitch, bitch. Moan, moan, moan. You are a fucking nimby, sir. You know... You know, have a good place for the kids to go and keep out of trouble off the streets, off the illegal drugs or what have you, or even the more harmful illegal drugs, but not in my backyard. That's what kind of guy this guy is. He's a fucking nimby. Find him on Facebook, everyone. We shall shame him. Yes, go shame him. Shame, 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 but not too much. Not that much, yeah. Yeah, shame. Don't, like, that. bully him in, like, an illegal way. Just, like, some yeah. shame will be fine. If you, like, just point at him and say, for shame, sir. Shame him. <laughs> Shum. Uh, oh lordy so the next one oh you know you know how uh, a lot of the more uh, right winger conservatives they will they'll try and try and twist things to fit their narrative um you know the pagan invasion is a good one becky and i have been going through that one and we're seeing a whole shit ton of it uh, mm -hmm. this is another example richmond virginia the twins, whose photographs appear on a Virginia billboard declaring no body is born gay, is actually one out and proud gay man who is not a twin. I heard about this. Yeah, the local TV station spoke with Kyle Rowe, the model from South Africa, whose images were used in the billboard, who said he was shocked his image was used to promote gay to straight conversion therapy, especially because he is openly gay. It just seems like there's no place in today's world for an, or for an organization that is promoting this as being some kind of deviant or distasteful lifestyle, because I've lived my life openly gay and happy my entire life, he said. So he's two kinds of gay. Aha! Uh, Rose said that the pictures were taken in a photo shoot nearly a decade ago. He said he signed away the rights and was told the pictures would be used in commercial and corporate ads and brochures. Okay. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Parents and friends of ex-gays, PFOX, 
the group behind the billboard has supported conversion <laughs> therapy, sometimes re referred to as reparative therapy, in states around the country. Yeah, because everybody needs to be Oh, in some states, because now people keep banning it, so there you go. Yeah, and it needs to be banned, because, you know, South Park... It's like torture. Yeah, South Park did, like, a really good takedown of it, like, years ago, when, when they put butters into, like, one of those uh, straight camps or whatever. Oh, God. And, and I will never forget... I. I don't remember if it was a pastor or if it was just – an obviously flaming gay dude who they basically forced him to stuff himself into a closet for the sake of their camp or whatever. You know, and They took a paperclip, and God needs to bend you and mold you and make you straight. You know, Never mind that you, know, you were made a paperclip. No, you have to be changed from the paperclip into yeah, a but a lot of these, thing. a lot of these things. I mean, there's this really great movie out there, and if you can, if you can find a copy, I mean, you probably can. It's called "But I'm a Cheerleader," which is a comedy, and I, RuPaul is in it actually, like, but uh, not as RuPaul, like as himself. Yeah. But you know, these places are really horrible because there's no federal oversight. This is the kind of places that are run by churches, where basically parents pay to have their children kidnapped in the middle of the night. And taken to basically boot camps where they are abused, and sometimes they are abused to death. There are news stories about it. Um, I know every so often um, that someone will will do a Reddit thread about it. You know, I was you know kidnapped in the middle of the night and spent you know a year and a half in a in a camp where I nearly died at AMA. You know, these are really really horrific places. Oh yeah, and and you know what, they, I I can see a bunch of people crying out for like freedom freedom of religion or whatever. But yeah, see here's the thing. Your freedom of religion stops when it starts actively harming other people and robbing them of their freedoms. Yeah. That's when it stops. And this kind of stuff, you know, they kidnap the kid in the middle of the night. Yeah, you're robbing that kid of the freedom to have his own life. Well, the way that they get around it legally is that the parents have given their permission. So it's technically not direct kidnapping. That's how these places, you know, will literally have children die in their care. And they go, oh, well... You know, most, oh, we don't know how that happened. Yeah. And they, they'll get away with it scot-free. Oh, God damn it. It's like, yeah, there's documented deaths there. You, 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 they, they should be checked out. It's, you know, even just one death should be checked out. You know, and, and if everything clears and everything's hunky-dory, then fine, go back. But Well, the thing is that a lot of these are church-run, so then all the church has to do is start whining, oh, separation of church and state, you can't legislate us. And then they delay that in, in court for long enough that the people, they shut down the camp, the people are gone. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I just want to see one person say, okay, you want, you want separation of church and state? Then how about people from your fucking religion stop pushing your fucking morals upon everybody else in the legal system? There are a few, and, you know, admittedly, there are a few things we can all agree on. You know, don't murder people, don't steal shit, sure. But like things like no beer on Sunday, why? Because of some religious thing, not everybody follows your religion. I can tell you many a times where I've had friends bitch because no beer on Sundays, you know, no liquor stores are open on Sundays because religion, holy shit, you know? Uh, and, and the abstinence-only sex education programs in public schools? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can you can bet your ass that it, that it's a religious based thing because mm -hmm. they they want everybody to follow in their religion when not everybody believes it, not everybody wants to believe it, and would most prefer for you to shut the fuck up and fuck the fuck off. So if you're gonna pull that, if you're gonna say separate of, separation of church and state means that they cannot and should not and better not come and investigate you when you are on document, you know, having kids in your care die. Then you better shut the fuck up about everything else. That's just saying. Yep. Ah. And speaking, speaking of separation of church and state, Salt Lake City, Utah, Psh. where according to George Carlin, they don't allow fires. <laughs> a woman is challenging a divorce court order forbidding her from discussing fundamentalist Mormon beliefs in front of her children. The woman, who the local news station is not naming to avoid identifying her children, was initially ordered by a third district court commissioner to not discuss religion or politics during visits with her children. This court order is about religion, the woman told the news station outside of court Tuesday, and it's in place to prohibit me from discussing any religion with my children, and it's anti-constitutional. The woman's lawyer, Laura Fuller, argued the commissioner's order raised First Amendment issues dealing with both free speech and religious freedom. 
The woman says she is divorcing her husband in part over differences of religious faith. The woman is exploring converting to fundamentalist Mormonism, oh dear, a belief system that includes the practice of polygamy, which in and of itself is not a bad thing. Her husband has elected to remain in the mainstream Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay, so they divorce because of religious differences. Okay, that happens a lot. You know, uh, that was like an old Robin Williams joke, you know. Uh, Jane, Ted Turner and Jane Fonda broke up. Uh, you know, Jane found God and Ted found out it wasn't him, you know. That sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And he has sole custody of the children who attend the LDS church. The woman is allowed supervised visitation, which she is seeking to change. In a temporary order filed by the court late October, the woman was forbidden from discussing the ap apostolistic United Brethren, a polygamous church based in Bluffdale. Respondent is restrained... Yeah. Yeah, Bluffdale. Oh, sorry, um, I just needed to say that again. Bluffdale. Bluffdale. Mm. Respondent is restrained from discussing other religions, including the AUB, with the party's children until such time as respondent decides to join another religious group, Commissioner Kim Loon wrote. At hearing on court on Tuesday, Commissioner Loon acknowledged the order may have been too broad and modified that part of it. I tried to make it very, very clear in my rulings that my problem is not with Miss Brown's religion. I don't care if her conduct is as a result of believing in the UAB, she said. I care that her conduct is creating chaos for these children and, in essence, rising to the level of emotional abuse. I want to focus here on conduct. Well, if we're going to be talking about religion and potential emotional abuse, reminding your kids that whenever you – if you die and you don't believe in this certain way, you're going to go and burn for all eternity in a lake of fire – that that that's sounding more and more to me over the years like that that's at least borderline emotional abuse well, am i am well, i honestly i mean with abuse aside mm -hmm. i don't think it's a first amendment issue because the father has sole custody yeah and if he has sole custody he gets to decide what religion the children are raised until such time as they are adults and they can be like i don't want to do this no more yeah so technically it's not a first amendment issue yeah so it's, it's, it's a matter. It's a matter of the settlement of their divorce and their and their custody. Yeah, which I, personally, I think if I think if she I wants, mean if if you're a lawyer, but sure. Yeah, I think if you know at this point, I think okay, if the woman wants to just simply discuss religion with her kids, like if they ask questions or whatever, then she should be allowed to do so. Not necessarily proselytize and try and convert them. Just discuss. That's all. I would be yeah, on board with that. Yeah, but I mean, she kind of sounds like a whackmobile who's trying to convert them anyway. But I mean, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah, that that there there is that too. Uh, let's see. The commissioner says she wanted no discussion of religion or politics on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Said that any other talk needs to be age appropriate. In the hearing, the husband told the commissioner he had not heard his soon-to-be ex-wife discussing religion with the children. However, he said she was discussing the court case, which he claimed upset them. Well, there's a lot of things that are going to be upsetting them. I mean, mommy and daddy are separating. Yes, but here's the thing, though. It depends on how she was doing it. You know? Like, because divorce is a messy thing. Yeah. And I mean, I my parents are not divorced, but I know that I have a lot of friends with, with divorced parents who's, you know, some parents didn't, like, they kept that from the kids, and but some parents were just, like, really vicious with the kids. Yeah. Like, your asshole father is doing this and things and stuff. So it depends on... If the way that she was doing it was const was would constitute emotional abuse. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He testified she would say things about the court case in front of the children. She would talk about what was going on with the court case as far as her version of the truth. Uh, which, okay, that if it's that's all it is. Again, d that depends on her tone when she's talking about them. Yeah. You know, if, if it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. Yeah, and, and especially without a lot of the details. But as far as her not discussing religion, I mean, especially since, okay, she's gone to a more polygamous sect of Mormonism, uh, you know, more fundamentalist Mormonism, and the kids might be curious, well, what does that mean? She should have a right to tell them, okay, this is what this means, you know, this is what mommy is going to go to now, and, you know, you believe yeah, what you want, or, or, you know, or in this case, listen to your father. If he doesn't want you doing it, just respect him and don't do it. I don't know. My gut says that there's more to this issue, or think, else it wouldn't have been such an issue, you know? Yeah. Like, there's, there's, there's stuff that's not being reported here. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. In fact, in fact, I'm pretty sure you are right. Uh, but uh, let's see. Oh, oh, we're down to our last story. Yes! We have time mm -hmm. for it. Yay! <laughs> Which is good. Uh, Masina, 
uh, out of uh, New York, by the way, I believe. I think it's around New York, New York City. Uh, the Masina Neighborhood Center is refusing to accept a donation from proceeds uh, from the proceeds of a Friday night drag show in Masina. A Neighborhood Center official it says it's due to what they believe to be the show's sexually explicit content. Um, let's see. I've, I've... Actually, most drag shows aren't, don't have any sexually explicit content at all. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's been a few years, but I've been to some drag shows. And you know what they do? They get up there. I've been... They... I've been in a drag show. Thank you very much. The end. Oh, sweet. See? This was oh, this was back when I was in college, and the gay group, we um like all the girls cro- like we we but each respective gender cross dressed, and then like each gender had a number, and then we had like the big number at the end, which was from Cabaret. But um, I'm really actually kind of ashamed to admit this, even though I look fantastic as as drag queen. I'm just saying, uh, the our the girls' version was um Mamba number five. Oh wow. Yeah, put that in the back machine. There you go. Just it was not sexually explicit at all. Let me just tell you what. But yeah, even I mean, you know, like I said, I've been to a few. They weren't sexually explicit either. I mean, shit. Uh, but but they were very well done. It's like, hey, sweet, you know. So yeah, it's not sexually explicit, you know. And I, and I don't I know just, how they I work think up that in... people think that any kind of that any type of cross dressing, either men or women or et cetera, gender, whatever you're you're doing there. Like they think that that somehow that because it's not the normal thing that they would do, somehow sex is involved in it. But really, that's so not. No, oh, it's like oh god. Um, it, it, then in that case, you know, anybody who goes and performs in hairspray, wh- whoever plays Edna in hairspray, is obviously going for a sexual role. For those who don't know, the role of Edna in hairspray is typically a a, a cross dressed. Um, role which means it's always a guy dressed as a woman because well you know what if you want to get real technical about it so was shakespeare there you go they didn't have women actresses back then all the roles were played by men yeah actually the women parts were played by boys Mm -hmm. so if you want to get really technical about it i'm just saying yeah yeah we, we we can go on about that for a while uh, let's see. The show's organizers, Massena native Michael Cameron, who performs female impersonation under the name Amber Sky, says the show is mainly cross-dressed men and women lip-syncing songs with comedy sprinkled in. See? Uh, we didn't feel it was appropriate. We deal with a lot of families, said St. Lawrence Community County Community Development Program Executive Director Norma Carey. Holy shit, that's a long goddamn title. Uh, she said the performer's sexual orientation didn't factor in. Bullshit. Um, when asked how the source of the donation affects its ability to feed the needy, Carrie said, I don't think it negates the donation. It's just difficult for an agency like ours to make that quantum leap to accept a donation from something sexual. It's not sexual. Do your fucking here's, research. Here's the thing. This is how this is how like the modern world is ruining everything. Because back in the day, like back in the 20s and 30s, this was done a lot mm-hmm. in small towns everywhere. And you know what they were called? They were called follies, like the spring, the spring folly or the summer folly. And it was like kind of vaudeville-ish. Everyone in town would try to do something, and maybe the mayor would dress up like an old woman or something like that. Like, it had its roots in vaudeville, yeah. you know? But just because now everyone thinks that, oh, the second that some kind of gender normativity is breached, oh, no, it's the gays, here comes a rainbow flag. There, I mean, there is a long history of this. Like I said, you know, g- Greek theater was, was all male with, with men playing women. Mm-hmm. So was Shakespeare. There is... There is such a wealth of history of cross-dressing for performance that it it's not it's not about sex and it really never has been I and mean, I don't know how to break it to people but you know what I, I want to say to to the the Massanina drag show if they don't want your money don't give it to them give it to the Ali Forney or Ali Forney Center instead there you go which is in New York City which um, takes care of uh, homeless LGBT youth that have been kicked out of their houses there you go. Yeah, just just give it to someone else. They don't want it. Hey, give it to oh, somebody who will you don't, give it. You don't want a donation? You don't want money? Fine. Yep. I'm well, sure there are lots of charities who are willing to accept that money. Oh, yeah. And you know what? We'll give it to other money, and we'll call you out for being bigots because that's what you are. Because, oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. It's, it's inherently sexual. No, it's not. Oh, As no, the gays. Yeah. Because she's I don't she doesn't come right out and say it, but it's pretty much oh my god, icky people are giving us money. No, we'd rather take money from the mob. <laughs> okay, I don't know about that much, but <laughs> it's still it's like ew, we don't it, they're undesirables. We don't want their money. 
just ew. Even though they're trying to help, even though they're trying to forward well, our here's the cause. Thing. Just because just because someone cross dresses, that does not make them a homosexual. That does not make them transgender. Yeah. You know, like somebody, like can be a transvestite, and still be shit. Hell, I'm technically a transvestite, because most of the clothes that I wear come from the men's department of Target. There you, you go. know, I mean, like seriously, like. Have you worn trousers lately, ma'am? Well, you may be a transvestite, you know? I mean, seriously. Yeah. Oh, okay. Try to t- oh, does that mean that, like, every kilt-wearing, hot-blooded, you know, red-blooded male in Scotland is a transvestite? Is that what that means to you, ma'am? Yeah. Does... From the Masnina County, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's plenty plenty more to go on with this story. Um, apparently, somebody also did a... a uh, bit of a Google search for Amber Sky and found like three or four porn stars with the same name as well. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that, that happens sometimes. There are, there are crossover names. I mean, I mean, there, there's a porn star named Siri. And then there's also, I think it's like, <gasps> that's uh, hilarious. Yeah. Siri. Yes. What, what can I do for you? I'm going to need you to lick my balls. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> you know, she's probably got it. You know, I, th- I think the porn star Siri does uh, like those, uh, uh, custom clips for sale or whatever. You could probably That's pay her to do that. <laughs> hilarious. That would be awesome. I wonder if somebody has done that. If nobody has done that, they need to. I would, but I can't. Afford- Siri, I need directions. Where do you need directions to? My taint. There you go. I'll get right on that. <laughs> like the one on the. That anyway. Would be, that would be awesome. If somebody does that, tell her you heard it from me. <laughs> because that would if be awesome. If you've done Siri porn, write the show. Yeah. And this is and also, this is the same porn star. She. Well, she's one of several, actually, who also cosplays every now and then. Naturally, she really? cosplays as – one time I saw her cosplay was Power Girl. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because obvious reasons. And she actually did a really good job with – got the costume right and everything. And, and she just – it was great. The costume was great. Of course, she looked That's great. That's what you want in a porn star, cosplaying abilities. Yeah. Yeah, and there, there's a few of them out there that cosplay and do porn. So the best of both worlds, <laughs> and and it's and it's all awesome. It really is. Uh, but on that on that awesome note, we are gonna have to get out of here for this week. Just bear in mind, next week it'll I'm gonna shoot for having a live stream version of it. Uh, hopefully, all of my co-hosts will be available. I hope, <laughs> and as many people as we can get on the show, because uh, it's gonna be the year in review. It will be a longer show. I'm going to try and shoot for no more than two hours. Uh, but that'll... And next week I work until 5.30. So, but it's the last Sunday before Christmas, so yeah. if I can last the whole two hours, we'll see. Yeah, so you should be you should be all right. I mean, because like 5.30 there is like, what, 11.30 here, I think. Yeah, so you, you should be fine. Yes, but I'm going to be exhausted. Well, you'll have time just to rest. Say, <laughs> if, you hear, if you hear like an abrupt thump from my end of Skype, just, just, just end the call. Yeah, there Keep you on go. with the others. There you go. <laughs> we will march on. <laughs> which, 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 which means, which means, if you actually do make it, we'll we'll put you on first. That way, you know, you, okay, so. that way after you're done, you can just thump. <laughs> Be like, I love you all, but I need to thump. There you go. Thump. But uh, we'll, but, but again, that'll that'll be something we play with uh, in the next week. So uh, something to look forward to. Um, and then the next week's show, considering uh, when it falls, it, it is literally the weekend before Christmas next week. And then Christmas weekend, I'm probably just going to take off for that week simply because, you know, we might still be traveling on the holidays. I won't, but I don't know if any co-hosts will be. We will maybe have family commitments or what have you because it's going to be just that weekend right there after Christmas. Because I think Christmas, yeah. what, falls on a Saturday, Friday? This year, I th- uh, think Thursday. I'm, Thursday, Thursday, yeah. So yeah. it's still it's still a little hairy for me on that one. So the the you know two weeks from now we'll be off, but next week we'll have the year in review, holiday show, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so look forward to that one. Um, hopefully it'll be live if we can get everything together. <laughs> A lot of people listening to this show, if they don't hear, see my announcement, they'll be like, wait, wait, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I emailed you, I think. I hope. <laughs> um, but like I said, we do have a few guests lined up, so we'll, it'll, it'll, be, an, it'll be a fun thing. Um, but anyway, with enough of my rambling, um, where can we find the Omega if we want to find her on social media? You can't. I'm a spy. No, you can find me on the Twitters. I am at the Omega Geek. I have a .com, which someday will look spiffy and new again, I promise. You can find me on Artie Gamerprod, of course. 
Uh, you can find my podcast, Lesbian Talk, and um, my show, What Went Right About Children's Television, is on Blip. Also, occasionally on ChinaLawson.com, whenever that manages to work out. Uh, sometimes I write articles for Nerdvice. I'm just scoping all over the place, yo. Yes. And as far as me, you can find me on social media, at, on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. You can find other material of mine on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, which, yes, by the time you guys hear this show, uh, if you're not already a patron of mine, if, you've, if you're hearing this show now, then uh, you can also go watch my latest review. I will admit there are a few issues that I didn't notice until after everything was done, but I can't really go back and fix them. But I can use whatever I learned here for the next one, so... So it, it's still kind of a getting my feet re-wet because it's been too long since I've done you know reviews on a constant basis. I kind of want to get back into it. And uh, feedback will always be appreciated. Um, if you want Patreon stuff, that's in the bumper right after, right after the show. So you can check all of that out. Um, and that is it for this week. We are going to get the hell on out of here. We will see you next week. And remember possible two-hour show next week. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian with the Omega, signing mm. off. Visit the Dragon Zoo. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash beckyhop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.